Hi guys, Meh Nushir from Rust IELTS Academy. I'm here today to talk to you about the latest IELTS speaking questions. It is always a good idea to practice different questions and topics before the test. However, you don't need to worry. When we talk to our candidates, many of them tell us that their main concern in speaking is that they don't have a very wide range of vocabulary. Tell you what, it's fine. Not everyone has got the vocabulary to talk about all the familiar and unfamiliar topics. Besides, there is no need to have information about everything so that you can answer the questions. You need strategies. Okay guys, what we want to do today is to take a look at some of the latest questions in IELTS speaking and I will give you my answers to them. Then I will explain why I gave those answers, analyzing them based on IELTS criteria. Okay, let's get started. In this video, we want to take a look at some of the questions and answers in the first part of IELTS exam, but the latest ones. First, let's take a look at the questions to see what they are all about, because here we have three different topics. So, the first topic is about headphones. The first question says, do you use headphones? The second question, what type of headphones do you use? The third question, when do you wear headphones? Now the second topic is about animals and insects. The first question says, have you ever learned about animals and insects? The next question says, do you watch programs or videos about wild animals? And the last question in this topic, do you learn about plants and insects? And the last topic in this part, the first part of IELTS exam, which is about advertisements. The first question says, where can you see advertisements these days? The second one, have you ever bought anything after seeing an ad on TV? And the last question, would you watch the whole advertisement video on TV? So. Before I give you my own answers to this quest these questions, what I want you to do is to take your time, think about your own ideas and answers, and then come back to me so that you can listen to my answers and then we analyze them together. So take your time. Did you come up with any ideas? Now let's listen to my answers and we are trying to learn some collocations, some boosters, and the way we should apply different things, different strategies, and techniques so listen very carefully now we start with the first topic which is about headphones the first question says do you use headphones here is my answer I do use headphones almost all the time even though I get earache afterwards the reason is that sometimes I listen to music or watch movies wearing my headphones but I also put them on to block the noise when I'm studying and as I am always studying, I always have them on. The second question says, what type of headphones do you use? Here is my answer. I'm not sure about the brand of it, but it's a really high quality one. I purchased it online three years ago and have been using it since, since then, but it has the same sound quality as before. And the last question, when? Do you wear headphones? And my answer, as I mentioned earlier, I use them while studying, working, or when I want to watch a movie or listen to some songs. Actually, this is a must in my life and I am really happy I've got a good one. Now let's see what I used in my answers. As you can see here, we have them, uh, the different things like the vocabulary, the boosters, fillers, they're marked in different colors. And first we want to start with the collocations and the words that I have used. In my first answer, I have used to get earache. You get earache, you get headache, you get stomachache. The second one, to block the noise. It means that I wear my headphones because I don't want to hear anything else. So. I have them on, I put them on, or I use my headphones. It is always important to use some synonyms or the paraphrase form of the words. In my second answer, I use the word high quality. For example, I have a high quality one. It is a very good one. 
I purchased. It means I bought. So I use another direct synonym here. Or I talked about the sound quality of it. So it's always a good idea to use some vocabulary and collocations related to the topic that you are actually talking about. In my third answer, I said this is a must. When you say something is a must, it means that it is necessary. It is very important. For example, studying is a must in my life. It means I have to study. This is necessary. So I said headphones or having them is a must for me because I use them all the time. It is also very important to use some synonyms in your sentences. So what you should do is not to repeat the exact same words that you hear in the examiner's questions. Instead, you should use some direct synonyms. For example, the first question said, do you use headphones? And instead of saying, I use headphones, I said, I wear my headphones or I put them on. And also, I use some synonyms in my own sentences. So you can paraphrase the examiner's questions or you can paraphrase your own words by using some direct synonyms. But remember, the words that you use, the synonyms that you use, have to be the direct and not close synonyms. It means that you have to be 100% sure about the words that you are using. The next thing I should mention here is how I have used some connectives. For example, in the first answer, even though, to show the contrast, or as, which is a good alternative for the word because. So you can also do the same thing. Don't just stick to and, so, but, because. Instead, you can use some better alternatives for these words. And now we move on to the second topic, animals and insects. Here's the first question. Have you ever learned about animals and insects? And my answer. I would say yes. Back in elementary school, my teachers used to read us books about the life cycle of some insects and the importance of some animals. Those books always made me think more about my surrounding, but these days, I don't read about them anymore, as I have other things to do. Here is the second question. Do you watch programs or videos about wild animals? And my answer. I don't really enjoy neither programs nor videos about wild animals. I am an animal lover, but gaining specific information about them doesn't interest me. Therefore, I don't watch such videos. And the third question. Do you learn about plants and insects? And my answer. My answer would be a no, because although I like uh, wandering in nature, I don't read much about that. This is because I prefer to feel and smell the trees, see the animals, and to spend time in the nature and live in the moment. Maybe I'm lazy that I never look for ways to learn more about plants and insects. Now let's take a look at my answers again to see how I have used the collocations, boosters, the synonyms, and connectives. So, in the first one, just starting with the collocations marked in red, you can see that I use the word life cycle or, or the term life cycle to talk about the insects and animals. Or also in the second answer, I used um, this word, an animal lover. You can be an animal lover. It means that you really like animals. Gaining specific information. You gain information. You get information about something. The third answer here. I like wandering in nature. Wandering means when you walk in a leisurely way. It means that there is no purpose. You just walk. You walk in the nature. So you can use such words or even better words. I just try to be simple and clear with my answers. The most important thing is to provide explanations and examples. In the first part, as the questions are short, then your answers then have to be short, right? But you should always develop the topic. Now I want to zoom in on the paraphrase form of the words. In my second answer, the question was, do you watch programs or videos about wild animals? My answer was, I don't really enjoy. So instead of saying I don't like, I said I don't really enjoy. I didn't repeat what I heard in the question. 
or again it doesn't interest me it means i don't like it mm -hmm. i don't enjoy it another important thing is to use fillers and boosters in the beginning or in the middle of your answers because you don't want to pause or hesitate all the time because the thing is that maybe you need some time to analyze what you want to say or think of the next idea and instead of saying hmm you can just use some fillers and boosters for example to answer the first question i started it like this i would say yes so instead of saying yes i said i would say yes or in the third one the question was do you learn about plants and insects and i didn't just say no i said my answer would be a no Mm -hmm. so you can also do the same thing the last thing i should mention here is how i use some more connectives and discourse markers just i just like what i did in the first topic for example in the first in my first answer i used but or as which is a good alternative for because to give a reason or in the second one i use neither nor to talk about two things but in a negative way therefore which is used to talk about the result of something. This is another word for so. And in the third answer, because, to give the, the reason, and although, to show a contrast. This is because, so instead of saying because, I said this is because, and then I gave my reason. So this is how we can use some connectives and discourse markers as well. And finally, moving on to the third topic which was about advertisements the first question says where can you see advertisements these days here's my answer obviously everywhere in today's world advertisements are undeniably everywhere we can see them on tv newspapers on the internet and different social media platforms because many businesses depend on ads the second question says have you ever bought anything after seeing an ad on TV? And this is my answer. To the best of my memory, TV advertisements have never persuaded me to buy a product. But I once saw an ad on Instagram about a pair of Nike sneakers and it totally made me want to have it. So I immediately ordered it online. And the third question. Would you watch the whole advertisement video on TV? My answer is no, never. In my opinion, the ads on TV are usually boring and they are produced to waste our time. So I prefer to skip them or do something else while they are on TV. So as you can see here, I gave just some very simple and clear answers. You don't need to use very advanced and fancy words in each and every sentence or many, many connectives, right? So you should be very clear with your ideas. When you say something, first of all, give a direct answer to the question. Then you explain about your answer, give reasons, give the result or examples. But as we are still in part one, your answer should not be very long, right? So this is all about short questions and short answers. Now I want to start with the collocations and vocabulary I used in this topic. For example, in my first answer, I used the word undeniably. It means something that cannot be denied. Or social media platforms. I was talking about uh, like the internet, TV, newspaper, where we can see advertisements. In my second answer, it never persuaded me. Something persuades you to do something else or somebody persuades you. They change your mind. Or it's made me want to do something. Something makes you to want to do something. And I order, ordered it online. You can order something on the internet. You can order it online. And the last one, my last answer, to skip the advertisement. It means not to watch it. Other than these words, I try to use some synonyms, the paraphrase form of the words in the questions. For example, in my second answer, the, the question was, have you ever bought anything after seeing an ad on TV? And instead of repeating the word ad, I use the word advertisement, right? So you can use the direct synonym. But if you're not sure if this is really the synonym of the word, then don't use it. It is always better to be error-free 
and your answers. The next thing is about the fillers and boosters. So, for example, in the second question, I wanted to refer to something in the past or something that I'm trying to remember. So I said, to the best of my memory, or as I remember, mm -hmm. in the third one, again, I wanted to talk about my own idea. So I said, in my opinion, and then I gave my answer to that. So don't just use very simple sentences. Try to, first of all, link them together because other than using the vocabulary and being coherent and all that, it is always important to use some complex grammatical structures. Mm -hmm. So link up your sentences, try to make some subordinate clauses or relative clauses, conditional sentences, compound sentences. And if you don't know what I mean by these things, you can watch the video of complex structures on our YouTube channel. That includes everything that can help you in your IELTS speaking and writing. So this was all about this. And you can also use these connectives, like in my first answer, uh, because, or also in the second one, but, which is a very simple one, but you're not trying to use complicated ones all the time. So this was about the last topic. Your answers to these questions might have been different, but it's okay. You just need some time, more practice, and I was just trying to give you some good answers, some clear ones using some collocations because I'm trying to teach you something. But if your answers are not like mine or you're using some different ideas, it's okay. Just try to be clear and stick to the IELTS criteria. Very well, guys. Just like what we did today, you can look for speaking questions, give your own answers to them, record yourself, and then analyze your answers. If you want to be evaluated by us, we can online a speaking mock test with our examiners. It will make a big difference, trust me. I wish you best of luck and see you very soon.